Well, all eyes are on a November election that could define the political future of our country. But here in New Jersey, voters in the 10th Congressional District will head to the polls this week to choose a replacement for the late Congressman Donald Payne Jr. Now, it's a crowded primary election that'll be held tomorrow, and that winner will go on to a special election in September. But as Ted Goldberg reports, that winner will only fill the seat through the end of the year, and then it could all change come November. Mid-July is beach season, but this year it's also election season. A crowded field of candidates is running for the 10th congressional seat in New Jersey to finish the term of Donald Payne Jr., who died earlier this year. The feeling of Governor Murphy and of House leaders was uh, this has to be done in case there's a close vote, in case we need that vote. We don't want New Jersey to miss out. We don't want New Jersey to be the reason why the House of Representatives in paralysis. The odds on favor to win this race is LaMonica McIver. She has more money behind her and more endorsements than any of the other candidates. She's running on her record as city council president here in Newark. We have, you know, created homeowners here. We have the only land bank here in New Jersey where we're able to sell homes to Newark residents for a dollar. We've done a lot of work around public safety. Um, our, you know, ability to be able to implement the Office of Violence Prevention and have a reduction in crime. Amazing amount of money this woman has been able to raise in just five to six short weeks. I have not seen the likes of this in a long time. Payne's death led to an unusual special election. It was too soon to replace him on the primary ballot, and he won the Democratic primary posthumously. For this new primary election, the 11 Democratic candidates campaigned for just a few short months. I wouldn't use the word chaotic. It's been a very different experience for me. We've had literally about seven and a half weeks uh, to really get out there, you know, talk to as many voters as we can in large spaces. Whoever wins tomorrow will get the Democratic nod in a heavily Democratic district for the remaining three months of Payne's term. For the next two year term, Democratic county committees will decide the nominee on Thursday and they don't necessarily have to pick whoever wins tomorrow. There was never an expectation that it would be easy. There was an ex expectation though that it would be fair. Some candidates aren't happy with this arrangement, like former East Orange Councilwoman Brittany Claybrooks. There are Democratic leaders who are saying it doesn't matter who wins tomorrow, and they're saying it publicly, it doesn't matter who wins tomorrow. It's a uh, secret and transparent process, so uh... You know, that's going to be up to the county committee. Uh, those are individuals with, uh, you know, their their own, uh, you know, minds to be made up, uh, you know, and uh, the candidate, uh, you know, their choice will be exercised, uh, you know, on the, uh, the 18th. Candidates have had similar pitches to voters, painting themselves as doers rather than dreamers. Housing is a problem. I'm an urban planner and housing specialist by trade. I've done the work, you know, it's a real issue. A lot of these guys and girls, you know, they talk about what they want to do, and I'm actually doing it. And a lot of them is actually, you know, within their job uh, careers is the reason why they're doing certain things. Uh, so they're getting paid to do it. You know, I'm, I'm more <laughs> coming from a round 10 basis in terms of my nonprofit. The 11 candidates are facing another opponent, low turnout. We don't usually see elections in July, and tomorrow's special election only features this race. It's going to be really hot tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's the middle of July. It's, it's not a, a normal thing to be, uh, you know, voting in, in the summer months. Folks are enjoying their summer. They're at the shore. People have, like, voter fatigue at this point. Whoever the committees pick will face Republican Carmen Bucco for the congressional seat in November, and the winner takes office for his or her full term in early January. In Newark, I'm Ted Goldberg, NJ Spotlight News.